Jason Robards is Corey Feldman. And Corey Feldman is Jason Robards. We saw Dream a Little Dream, so you know what that means. at Largo to talk about the best Corey's movie ever made, Dream a Little Dream, a movie that came out in 1989. Now, I never have done this before, but I'm doing it tonight because I was worried that you might have trouble tracking what the hell we're talking about. So what I did was I decided to pull the description from Wikipedia about this movie, just to put us on the same page. And I think this will help. Bobby Keller is a slacker high school student who, while running through a shortcut through a backyard in his neighborhood one night, collides with Lainey, over whom Bobby has recently been obsessing. During the collision, elderly professor Coleman Edinger is performing a meditation exercise in the yard with his wife, Gina, theorizing that if he and his wife can enter a meditative alpha state together voluntarily, they will be able to live together forever. However, just as the Edingers are on the verge of completing their meditation experiment, the teenager's collision renders both teens unconscious and acting a type of body switch between the four characters. <laughs> Woo! Wow. That's the baseline that we just need to understand. We'll break it all down, but I figured if I just laid that down, it puts us on the same page. Because honestly, that clarified a few things for me. <laughs> this movie is an hour and 54 <laughs> minutes. When I saw that, everything stopped. <laughs> I got upset. It's a Corey's movie. <laughs> then I did a little research, and I heard that the original cut was four hours. <laughs> and that Corey Feldman has been trying to get that cut back out, released. Thank God he has not been successful. He did, however, get a sequel <laughs> made with the teen witch herself, Robin Lively, We'll talk about that later, but right now there's so much to talk about, and I can't wait another minute. Please welcome to the stage my co-host, Mr. Jason Manzoukas! What's up, jerks? That's right. How we doing, Largo? Yeah, let's go. How we doing, Jason? Everybody else, shut up. That's right, there is a Jason in the audience tonight. It's a night of Jasons, Robards, Zooks, <laughs> this motherfucker. He gets it. Jason, I uh, was saying that I was familiar with this film. I was not. Okay. I never saw it, but I saw the Release commercial the for Release the Corey cut. Release, Release the, the Corey, Corey cut. Give me cut. four hours of this. The fact that it was ever... Like, any cut of this was four hours is irresponsible. And, and I read, because I, I read that too, and I read the other two hours is just more montages. More montages set to music for a movie that is either about three or four people or three or four hundred people. I'm not sure. I can't make heads or tails of it. And the one pure joy of this film was watching it before our next co-host comes out here on stage. 
and then setting myself in a perfect position to watch her face as she saw certain scenes unfold. That's your, that's your kink. That, it truly, it truly is. It's like walking in front of somebody in a haunted mansion and be like, oh, they're going to get the shit scared out of them now. I cannot <laughs> wait. I cannot wait. For uh, you, it's just watching June watch Love on a Leash. <laughs> it works. It works for me. And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please welcome our next co-host, June Diane Raphael. Welcome, June. How are you? I'm well. How are you, Paul? I'm fine. Thank you so much for asking. You know, I just finished this movie, and I mean, minutes before. I, heard it I was in the green, there's two green rooms back there. I was in one of them and could hear the movie ending <laughs> a, a, as if it was an echo of my life but an hour ago. Yeah. Like flashback, like we were in the dream state together. Right. Let's all enter the dream state together tonight. I want to get started because we have to talk about that description. There are several issues. Okay, I got it. I got it. Okay. Now, here's what I'll say. Yes, the movie is almost two hours. <laughs> Which I but, couldn't believe. Every time I paused and there yeah. was still so much. So I was much like, more. I was I like, can't... what's happening plot-wise is wrapping up. Yeah, it ha- must when be. When I saw it was still 35 minutes, I was like, it's over. They've it's already, over. the dance it's is done. It's been over. It's been over for a long time. I thought I was watching it with commercials because I watched it on Amazon. And when I, when I played it, it said with commercial breaks. Oh. And then started and I was like, where's that commercial break? <laughs> Where is it? Like, I need a break. By the way, and I never I'd got like, one. I'd like to be advertised I'd, to. Yes, someone. Please give please me a break. Me. Now I'll tell you this much: at an hour uh, and fifty-five minutes, when the credits come on, you would think I would slam down that laptop and be like, "Done." No, I watched that that duet. Had to. Had and, to. And rewound it. Wow, wow, wow. wow. I, mean, I could talk about the dance sequences in this movie for the next, I don't know, six hours? Well, you know what? Before we, we do that, I, we have a very special guest tonight. Oh, my gosh. It took me a while to even figure out how to introduce him because he is so prolific. He is a, uh, a comedian. He is an actor. He's a podcaster. You might have heard his podcast off menu or Perfect Sounds. You might have read his uh, best-selling book, uh, Classic Scrapes. You might have seen him on Taskmaster. He's got a brand new special on HBO called Heckler's Welcome. Please welcome James Acaster. <laughs> Welcome. Have a seat. There you are. Am I in here? Am I in the right place? So happy to have you. And yeah. I apologize that we made you watch this film. No, it was good. It was nice to come to LA and watch that. <laughs> I, like, guess... I picture you just in a hotel crushing two hours of this, which probably took you like more like four because of pausing like me. I had little pauses, and also during it, I realized I remembered that Corey Feldman had done an album that came out in 2016 called Angelic to the Core, which yes. is kind of like the music equivalent of this film. <laughs> and I was like, I haven't, I haven't actually heard that album. So I listened to that album after I watched this movie, yeah. which is over an hour long and 22 tracks. <laughs> Wow. 22. Wow. People and are I doing don't, the 22 double, track a, album. I own it. It's a double LP. It's a double LP. <laughs> Fred Durst is on it at one point. <laughs> so is I, that his voice at the end in the duet? I don't think that is. If, yeah, actually, I wouldn't put it past him doing both of those voices at the end of the duet. <laughs> I definitely, both of those are Corey Feldman. I definitely think it was his voice because I think he... sounded he, great. He, hey, look, he brought it. He's, it's he brought it's it. changed. It's changed in time. I'll say this much. I just want to understand where we're all at with the Corys. Because uh, for some people, the Corys were a very big uh, thing. I remember them from the Lost Boys. But more for me, it was this movie called License to Drive. I was like, these are right. These are cool. These are cool guys. Um, I didn't find them to be funny nor cool in this movie. But I didn't know if you all had any No, it's such a great question. Like, let's start by locating ourselves in terms of the Corys. Um, my Corey contextualization is I, what I was actually, and I had, I really had to confront this. Like, I thought the Corys were hot 
growing up. Like I was like, wow, Cor like the Corys can get it, both of them. And I watched this and I was so stunned by what I was seeing. <laughs> and because I agree with you, neither neither cool nor interesting nor charming nor hot. Like and and that was so sad. It was like something had died. Oh wow! You know? There there is your your mm. innocence. I think it was more Corey Haim, but even even Corey Feldman. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm about it. And then I saw this, and I was like, wow, he's unpleasant. <laughs> he's it's an unpleasant young man, but very understated. <laughs> Subtle work. I mean, I would argue on some level, bold choice for two, like, heartthrob boys to be, to go from Lost Boys, horror film, fun but funny, right? Then License to Drive, funny, uh, you know. Well, and Corey then, Feldman's done Stand By Me by, at this point, yeah. yes. like, you know. And then to, to team up and do a dramatic body switch movie <laughs> well, about old people? You're calling it a body switch movie, it's though. It's not. It's not. It's okay. not. Because I only think what, there's one switch. The movie wants us to believe there's two switches. Right. And that is not the case. And in your description, you implied that everyone switched. Well... You said there were four switches. There's not. There's just not, Paul. It's only two switches. Paul, there's not... There's Paul, one switch. Paul, admit you're wrong, Paul! There's well, no I, would, I would argue. I would there's, argue. There's not, there's not Paul. Okay. Wow, you see. <laughs> thought James would get my back. Well, I think that one is a dormant body switch. Uh, a, a, <laughs> June. 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 <laughs> June just a dormant, but June just did a spit take. What does that mean? This has been a physical weekend for you. Last <laughs> really night, has. last night you thought you were being attacked by a clip. Ooh. I thought a dormant do body mean? switch because uh, uh, the you think old Piper Laurie. You think you think Lainey was in Piper Laurie, but at the end, Corey Feldman says, "I, I was just kidding about all that." <laughs> It's a full-blown rug pull. Just like, ha-ha, zoink! No, no, no. Because Piper Laurie at the end is like, I'm listening to the cool music and I'm dancing oh around, my shaking my ass. You, so and then why is he saying he made it up? <laughs> no, he made, what he that's made even, up... I think he made crazier. up... I think he made up that there was like... Um, that they were going to die. Yes. To me, oh, it yeah, felt that's like funny. the movie uh, wanted to be... <laughs> the movie play, almost but. had a like Richard Curtis about time... Like, sure. very sweet story inside of it in that I was like, oh, this is about Jason Robards realizing he can't live forever and be young. He has to accept his own death. And that living as young as a young Corey Feldman and falling in love with the woman that he, you know, assuming that Piper Laurie, it, like Paul is saying, would be, you right. know, uh, present and that that would be the love. And then that would lead to him accepting his mortality and dying. And wouldn't that be sweet and heartfelt the way it is in a truly shattering, beautiful movie about time? This is not that even a little bit. No. And yet there are some moments, I will admit, the scene where Corey Feldman is talking Joel off a ledge because he's Whoa. about to kill someone. <laughs> that ha that's a, a, a scene that happens. So in that scene, though, he delivers a monologue to him from an old man's perspective yeah. mm -hmm. that I thought was quite moving. Oh, yeah. But when he talks to his parents, Alex Rocco... Okay, yeah. I've Victoria done, Jackson. I've done some math on this. Yes, please. Okay, okay. so Alex Rocco uh, is the father. Mm -hmm. He is born in 1936. Great. Okay, we see him in this movie only wearing a bathrobe and housing Oreos, <laughs> just just polishing off Oreos. So that makes Alex Rocco at the time of this movie 53 years old. A totally normal and cool age. <laughs> which prime which of his help, life which might help you place where I am on the Corey's meter <laughs> then we have Victoria Jackson she's born in 1959 so at the time of this movie she's 30 so that's, that's a, big age a 53 year old married to a 30 year old but here's where it gets concerning Corey was born in 1971 he's 18 so that means that Victoria Jackson gave birth at 12 when oh, Alex yeah. Rocco was 41. So <laughs> Alex Rocco was a 41-year-old man mm -hmm. who impregnated. I don't know if they were together, but I would say maybe they were dating at 11 and then they had a baby at 12. 
I'd say that that goes a long way to explaining the vibe at home. <laughs> the dynamic between the three of them now makes perfect sense. And although I was completely behind Corey Feldman when he gave them a telling off, I now think he should be more sympathetic to what they've been through. <laughs> In the first scene where the parents appear, Corey Feldman, it's the post-accident scene where Corey Feldman is waking up and seemingly has amnesia. What is really the case is that he's waking up with Jason Robards inside of his body. And when it's and you see his point of view, and it's Alex Rocco and it's Victoria Jackson. I was like, oh, Victoria Jackson is playing his sister. Me yep. too. And then I was like, uh oh, no, that's this can't be it. This this it can't be what we're doing. This is well, this seems nuts. And Alex Rocco is like full blown Alex, Alex Rocco. Yeah. I was about to say elderly man, but I know... Hang you, on, man! <laughs> I, I, can you see me Be now? Be cool, bro! Corey Feldman's you mom... You just shocked me when you said Alex Rocco is 53 in this movie. That, <laughs> that rocked me. I understand. <laughs> I don't know if I can recover from that information. Yeah, the crazy thing, I want to talk about her rollers, her hair rollers, <laughs> for roughly the next 20 minutes. They're in all the time. And I thought, okay, and it's a, you know, it's a choice you see a lot in movies that are made around this time. Okay, but they're in so much and at all hours of the day. Like, uh, there's several times where they're in, a, yeah, like, that's breakfast, okay. But then there are times where I know there's a night scene where she's got them in. And I'm like, wow, what, what, how tight are these curls going to be? They are... We I, never see, do we? We see oh. once, okay. and it's at the end. And actually, I was like, oh, wow, that's character growth, because by the end, <laughs> she's able... Because in a lot of movies, you guys were able to understand women and their journeys by their hair. <laughs> you know, sometimes it gets looser, and, you know, that's great. It's a great way to understand women. <laughs> but we do... She has it down at one point, and it's rather relaxed, but... um. It's very short, so wow, those curlers are doing so much. Yeah. In this picture so that we're much. looking at right now, I feel like somehow Alex Rocco and Corey Feldman are closer in age than either are to Victoria Jackson. I, I also, what I, I pulled this picture because of the, the tower of spam that is on the stove. <laughs> there is... Uh, at a minimum, I'm counting at least eight to ten cans of spam in a uh, in a yeah in a pyramid formation. I don't know what's going on in this house. I honestly next to I, next to the fire you? extinguisher. Yeah. You know, if a fire extinguisher is that close at hand, there have been fires. Oh well, you know what happens right after he walks out is oh, yes. yeah, she lights the whole thing <laughs> That's on right. fire. I I guess the thing that I'm so confused about is. For all intents and purposes, this is a teen movie. Is it? Well, that's the question. <laughs> this is my real question, it, is what is this movie? Well, that's it. Who is it about? Who are we rooting for? I who is the protagonist? Who is the antagonist? I think it has to be. I think the answer has to be, this is a Jason Robards film. Like, mm. because if you, because he's somebody who wants to escape death, even though that's not really clearly defined. Um, but sort of. That, that is what he's trying to set up. Is right. That he wants to be able to be with his love forever. And, but yet, the way they introduce him and his love is confusing. Because when he's together, I'm like, oh, he's the demented old man. And Piper Laurie and Harry Dean Stanton are like... What are they up to? Okay, kids? so yeah. did anybody else think... So I saw that scene. I actually watched it twice because I had to rewind it. And I thought, okay, they're having an affair. Clearly. Yes. Okay. She so, absolutely on the lips. Absolutely. She not only but does she kiss you? the energy between them, aside from what they're doing in that scene, and yes, they kiss for a little while on the lips. It's a lingering mouth kiss. So here's my here's what I think is going on. Is I think that they are mirroring both relationships between young and old. So so say more. So I think that. <laughs> I think that Harry Dean Stanton and Jason Robards are stand-ins for Joel and Bobby. You there's think a Harry there's Dean a love Stanton triangle. Is Joel? There's Joel's a love triangle. Not, and not a that he's Joel. I'm just saying I think there is a they're constantly mirroring dialogue, mirroring um, um, framing, mirroring blocking. They're constantly mirroring young to old. So that's why I thought that was. But there. do you think she is having an affair yes. with him? Yes. Yeah. James, do you think that she's having an affair? I don't know, man. You guys speak really fast, and there's like. 
there's like no gaps. Hurry up, James. James. I like. Jump in, James. I really Do you appreciate think you. James, had an affair, go. James. Yes or no. Go, Say, James. Yes go. Or no. It's and a simple question. Caster, go. I appreciate you asking me a question, but I've been. Uh, <laughs> I've become an audience member at this point. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> The whole time I watched the movie, I thought, oh, it's going to actually be really interesting to see Corey Feldman realize that Gina, Gina is having an affair. Yes. Yes. Great. Never and happens. Never happens. Never see it. Never see it. Um, but he's and I described, also but who all, is Ike to them? In the his gen- best he's friend. described as a dependent, and I think that's a joke, but he's just a friend? He's his best, he's Jason Robards' best friend, is what he says at some well, point. Well, he's a lot younger than him. Sure, sure. Oh, I listen, I agree. <laughs> so much so that I thought Jason Robards was Gina's father. Yes. Like, I, at a certain I point, I was like, oh, it. that's, yeah, they joke about my dad's so crazy. And maybe what was happening was he was so committed to living forever that he wasn't living at all. Yeah, maybe. It felt like at times that they'd let a different person direct each scene. (laughs) And they weren't allowed to watch what's been done so far. So you think the movie is constructed like an exquisite corpse writing piece? Yes. Well, there is, there are these moments because in the beginning of the movie, I think the other thing that I'm missing in a, I mean, it's, is it a body swap? Again, I don't know how to, a, a, a body swap movie. It's a movie. body swap movie for Robards and, and Corey Feldman. Or it's well, a, just, you know. ro- for just Robards, because I guess, I guess Jason Robards. Yeah, where's Corey Feldman? He's in Dreamworld. He's in, He's in just in the Limbo? Toilet paper house. <laughs> and by the way, I kept, which I thought was a house. brilliant. I kept thinking eventually we'll catch up to the period where someone TPs the house. Never that would did. be the final scene and the or robots would die. Or someone starts moving out of it. I just thought mm-hmm. that the, there was a lot of Twin Peaks elements in this whole movie yep. that I was like, ooh, this is kind of inter- like, it was well, an interesting. It was an interesting way. alone. Yeah, I I'm, bet that was in the four-hour cut. We'll never see it. But <laughs> this idea of like Jason Robar, like I think a lot of times in a body switch movie, it's like, I'm the dad. I have no time for my son. Then I switch with my son. I realize, oh, I need to be a better dad. Jason Robards is actually a multifaceted character. He's angry at kids, but he's also very like mm. spiritual. But he also eats well, and he has a sense about himself. It's like I can't quite get what he's doing. What he's and about. then when he does the Michael Jackson dancing, I'm like, well, that's definitely not Jason Robards. <laughs> but but the, in that point in the movie. Um, Corey Feldman's body is being controlled by Jason Robards. That's what I'm saying. So, it's like, so the Michael Jackson dance. stuff makes like just no sense. Well, that's something it's like, got to be coming from Corey Feldman. But I don't also feel like Corey Feldman the entire movie is like ah oh, these damn kids. What well, I'm looking does, for is yeah. is like a moment where they're like this is how you act as a kid. Mm. But he has no issue. He he well, seems he, to he fit says in immediately. To him, Go watch the home videos, and you see him put a couple of cassettes in. Yeah. but you never see. The videos themselves. Like, I would have loved, there's so many montages. Why not a training montage about how you train an old man That's to fine. act like an 80s teen? They give me that all day, every day. I guess he just watched the one Michael Jackson video a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously. I laughed so hard. There was also a video at, in, this, in this shot where he's, he's getting the videos and putting them in. There's a video on top of the TV labeled Aunt Irma's Visit. Just yes. a whole a whole VHS devoted to her time there. I had a video of my great grandma's birthday, but I guess yeah, a visit is not really video camera worthy. I don't think you But it was at a time I appreciated the detail because I was like, oh, this was back when if you had a VHS recorder, everything was worthy of filming. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know? Yeah. I had a lot of tapes. A lot of Me too. Yeah, a lot of tapes. <laughs> but this again, the issue of it is is like he, it's not an old man being in a young boy's body because he never even seems to enjoy, hey, I'm young. I'm so sorry to disagree with you, Paul, but he does look himself in the mirror and say, at least he's got a good body. <laughs> I forgot about that. Which, to me, is Corey Feldman improvising. <laughs> what? That was, no, that was refreshing. It's not, <laughs> it's not often you see someone self pet their self. <laughs> There's not enough self-petting goes on. <laughs> I was 
was actually getting a little bit upset with Jason Robards as the film went on because it didn't, it seemed like he was falling in love with Lainey, who's Lainey. Yes. Lainey, who's not Gina. Lainey, right. who's Lainey. It is only that, that it is a love story between an old man and right. a teenage and I'm, girl. Yes. Who he's just convinced is his girlfriend? But it's like if you sh- took his that, wife, rather? If you took that and put that in the real world, that would be frightening. Like, you are my wife. You are my wife. And it's like, no, I'm not. I'm just a pe- I'm somebody else. And and he does it until she was like, yeah, I guess I am your wife. I got. <laughs> she be doesn't fair. even believe it. She to be like, fair, she is frightened when he says that. You're right. Yeah. And then in the next scene, she's not, and she's fine. With it. <laughs> she is frightened for one scene. <laughs> she she basically goes like you're not gonna stop calling me your wife so I'll go with it and I think that that's a good way of just yeah. being it's good. You, she's just yes ending him well, and- her other option is the most fucked character I've ever seen in a film so like it's either the guy says you're my wife or the guy who's got a gun oh my god well why is that guy so crazy Joel? yeah I thought for so long know. that Joel was the villain of Me the too. movie and in fact he's not He's their best friend, even though they dress, the Corys dress so much more like the bad guys, Dumas and those yeah. guys, than they do Joel in his blue suede fringe coat. Joel looks like the handsome bully asshole who shows up with a gun. Why is he best friends with the Corys? I don't know. I couldn't understand I couldn't the hierarchy of this high school. I wrote that down multiple well, times. But yeah. What the- is this school's hierarchy? Yeah. Here's the problem. The other Corey should have been Joel. Because it's yeah. like my best friend, but Corey Haim is kind of just on the side. He has my, nothing to do. Here's my pit. This no. is what I think happened. I think Corey Haim broke his leg, and Corey Feldman was like, hey, my buddy needs a job. Can he just like <laughs> hang out on set and be around? Because his character can't be in the script. He's nothing he does is, has any effect whatsoever. If the e- movie ended and Corey Haim was revealed to be a ghost or, wow. or a Tyler Durden, I genuinely was like, maybe he's a Tyler Durden here. I don't know. There's only been one Corey the entire time. You're right, though. It's, a, it's an odd, the, the movie poster, it's the two of them and Lainey. It's a, you know, it's a, it's, it, you're like, this is it. This is the, this this is is the it. buddy, this but is... it's Joel. Joel is because even in the end, the the climactic moment is saving Joel from a life of despair. But we don't like Joel. I don't think we like Joel. Joel's scary to me. Joel sucks. If I met the actor who plays Joel now, I would kill him. <laughs> and you would be justified. You would be. We would all back you up and be like, we would all provide an alibi. Yeah. The fact. That jo- the, the fact that Lainey's mother, oh my God, I get into Lainey's mother, but. God, I get into holy Lainey's shit. mother. Holy shit. And Ron. Ron. Oh, Ron. We, we have to talk about Ron. Ron is seemingly is just dating Lainey's mom and tranks. <laughs> like, she. Why don't you help me with this? He says, handing her a roofied glass of wine. I Ron thought it was apple juice, problem. but still. But here's the thing. Why are they tranking her? I know why we don't so want she, her to go to sleep. I think so that she won't run away, like get out of crazy. that. That's crazy. Oh, yeah? You think? <laughs> what what's crazy? crazy? So Wait, at the ready. What's That's what's is, so disturbing. It's like, get it? Mix it up. Get she it had it, though, mm. as if she had a, a loose Lucy capsule. Ready. She yeah. had a loose capsule that she could open and do yeah. this. Like it is she's for, a spy. It's not the first time this has happened. It's, this is reassuring to hear you all talk about this because I thought, because I've not, I've not spent much time in America. I don't know what your customs are. You didn't know what we're about. <laughs> How and dare you? The How whole, dare you? The I whole thing have, was done so casually yeah. and so like routinely. I mean, listen, after I assumed this, you're all roofing yeah. your kids when it's time for bed. And <laughs> when there's a boy you don't like, <laughs> give her this. I imagine after this week and the election, you have some questions, yeah. you know? The other thing, too, and I, I know that we're, we are focusing on that he that she roofied her own daughter. And, yeah, that's a, that's something that Rightly we should flag. so. <laughs> <laughs> got to get her to bed. You got to focus on it a little bit, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what I you're thought. You're speaking it away as if you're about to gloss over it. <laughs> I, look, and I'm glad that you're calling. I'm not going to gloss. Sure, it's bad, whatever. But... 
it was also the fact that they were giving her wine too. Like I it, thought was it was a double. Nice. It was a double whammy. It was like drink some liquor and it's roofied. The like, thing you are never supposed to do: mix pills and lick and booze. What are you doing? And yet they're so upset when they catch a boy in her in her room. And why was she covered in red? Was that the blood from his face? From his, yeah, he's, he punched, punched the window oh. in and cut his hand and then went, well, I know where this is going, her face. I love that he respectfully walks away. You know, you're right. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Respectfully walks away, then immediately frantically climbs the lattice and then shatters the window <laughs> and starts screaming, wake up, wake up! What? But... Also, it's like at that point you could have just run past them. Like you've caused will, such a commotion. I will also argue, as somebody who grew up in in a suburban neighborhood, the uh, the amount of glass that they, like, at least by sound design, let you know it's like he's banging on that window and there's no sound. It's like he's on the outside of an airplane, it's like kung, 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 and it's silent inside her room. <laughs> like I was surprised. I was like, he should she should be able to hear Something. him. Okay, well, I you- think her mum's the type of person who would have installed <laughs> soundproof glass. <laughs> Does into any- her daughter's window <laughs> so no one can hear whatever the fuck is going on there on a weekly basis. You're right. Now it all makes sense. And now, I yeah, am no. actually wondering if one of the reasons why Lainey couldn't body switch with Gina is because of the amount of tranquilizers. <laughs> <laughs> Something oh, yeah. just didn't... It's just being suppressed yeah. by Valium. <laughs> Like her, her spirit is like yeah, was floating get, down, yes. and then was like, I can't get in this. She's drunk <laughs> to fuck. Oh, she's not here. <laughs> like, this girl oh, out cold. Just kind of can only lift no, up her arm. Get in that. I'm curious. Has anyone in this audience ever scaled a lattice or a, a ladder in in order to get into someone's room? No, right? <laughs> Whoa. Yes? Yeah, not a lattice, but I've had... It was my own house, so oh, I don't okay. know if that matters. But, still, but I, I've had to scale. Yeah, I've had to scale. This Where did you scale? This movie, yeah. I scaled... Um, I scaled my house in, in Long Island, in Rockwell Center. Which side? The... Oh, <laughs> someone suspicious? <laughs> I just want to the see right how high right you went up. Right by my bedroom. Wow. Only, no, no, no. But only onto the roof, like the flat oh, roof okay. that was right above the porch. Wow, okay. Wow. It's impressive. Thank you. It, Even though I don't know that house yeah. and I don't know your relationship yeah. or anything, that story made more sense than the movie we watched. <laughs> it's with you every step of the way, I can picture the yeah. house. <laughs> there was a beginning, there was a middle. The yeah, characters yeah. were clear and Sounds good. location. Well, there is this thing with the movie, which is the dream world. There, There is a lot of stuff going on here, which makes me also feel like it maybe the script is a little bit tighter, and then some improv is taking it off track a little bit. Because there are, there isn't there a moment in there where Corey uh, Haim is like, "What am I doing here? Who am I? I'm a good-looking guy. Ladies like me. I'm like, oh, what's happening this. now? Not only that, yeah. not only that, but that's the scene where he's alone in the car waiting for Joel to come out yeah. with the gun. It keeps go- fading to black, then fading back in for another round of Corey Haim improv. That is not, he's like, I went to the dance. Nobody wants to dance with me. Bop, bop, beep, boop, boop. And then it's like, Joel comes out and he's like, I got, I refilled the flask. Joel, my guy, you got to slow down. And he's got a gun. And Corey Ham's like, oh, come on, man. Be cool. <laughs> they must have let him run for a while. Big time. I think, the, yeah, the in and out thing is like, they were clearly like behind the camera going, just let him go. It's gold, yeah. baby. Well, that's how the, the opening of the movie is like that because they're having a sleepover, a little slumber party. I and couldn't you, make heads or tails of this. The op- I, I would like I should just play the opening scene because it is it really is No, the audience revolting yes. against it. Yes. Hey, keep talking, we'll show the whole movie, assholes. The doors are locked, it doesn't matter. Also refreshing to have a film that's got like two opening credit sequences. Right. Well that yes. Jason Robards is singing in front of an audience. That's the second one. That's the second one. The first one is the Corys in their room um, seemingly hating each other. Right. And then there's Robards, then, which is a name I've just learned today, by the way. Okay. And, and I've heard it a billion times now. <laughs> but that's the second one, right? Well, yeah, that, you know what? I don't even have that opening one. I have the Jason Robards singing because this is, an, again, an odd choice. It's like, oh, this is our main character, I guess. Like, we've just seen the Corys. Now we watch him. And he's not singing, right? So it's... Because this is dreams. This is in the dream space. 
Okay. Oh. Corey Feldman yeah. is ha- and Jason Robards are sharing this dream. This is the first I instance know of the this. Dream okay. Space. Which is a Wait, little oh, weird. Sorry. No. I'm so sorry. I'm a scholar of this movie. Am I wrong? <laughs> no, you're this is right. You don't think so? This is definitely a dream. Just and this Robards? Is... Hang on. Tim no, says no, no, just Tim, Robards. No, 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 Tim. And I Tim. believe Tim. Tim. No, I don't believe Tim in this one instance. Tim because shot Tim. In this one instance. Because Corey Feldman in this next scene says I had a dream of an old man. Yeah, him. It's j- You missed it. He says it's the guy yeah, who's on the way to school. Eat him. shit, Tim. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Eat shit, Tim, you idiot. I'm trying to fit yeah. in. That's my son, man. James, you get it. Eat, eat a bag of shit, Tim. Yeah, out, out, out get your, him. Out of your own ass. Get See? him, James. <laughs> Internationally humbled. Hope you're hungry, Tim. Because you're eating a bag of shit. Here's the thing I found troubling, though, about the logic. If Corey Feldman, Corey Feldman did dream, I won't say if, he did have this dream that we're seeing right now. It seems, though, that everything got thwarted by happenstance with the bike. It just, if they hadn't collided. What would have happened? What would have happened? Would they have, Mm. What? where would their bodies have gone? Someone in the audience was like, right. (laughs) Yes, June, I thought the same thing. Also, because, but that's what's weird is Corey Feldman was dreaming this Mm -hmm. way before that collision. Well, yes. And because they always cut through his house, so he, they have this back and forth every day when they're cutting through the yard and having that angry back and forth. So you think it's just like he happens to be dreaming about him? Yes, he says, I dreamt about that guy. He, he literally says, I know, it's I Jason know, Rupo. Yes, but, but my point is that it felt, in the, or that the movie wanted us to feel, that they were always going to switch bodies. Oh, I see. I'm oh, sorry. I don't know. I don't know if I agree with you there, June. Oh. Um, <laughs> I guess you're getting pretty I, comfortable I, I, I up here. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit there. <laughs> Uh-oh. I think you're right. I, I think they have a connection. Yeah. And that's why the body switch swap was able to happen so efficiently. Because I think they were, already, they were already connected uh, in the dream world. I, so I, think, I think what we yeah. needed was one line where, uh, where they say, Hey, come on, don't be so hard on the kids. He's like you when you were a kid. Like, give me this something. This movie needed rules. This yes. movie needed two scenes of exposition. And by the way, have... they had plenty of time. Oh. It's two hours. <laughs> and instead, it was in just world. montages. Instead, it was replaced by music monsta- montages. And let me be clear, the music is dynamite. I love yeah, it. Yeah. The, the soundtrack, the music is, it's REM. I'm like, a, I'm really, a real sucker really for great. Van Morrison's Into the Mystic. Uh, I was singing it when you, it came on. You yeah. play that song for me, it, and me it is too. instant emotion. Emotion. Yes. That, that went a long way to mm. investing me in this yeah. movie. But I will also yeah. say it's a weird era of 1989, and these kids are like, rap is dead. We listen to old 60s music. And it was like, <laughs> mm, it doesn't feel... Look, I like this music. It was great. But they're singing like doo-wop by like a, a, a trash can fire. And then at one point... <laughs> and then they just cut away from that real quick. Don't tell St. Clair. <laughs> but there is like... It is, it is odd that they, their choice, but yet they're also dancing like Michael Jackson. Music is great. The music great sound. wonderful. I, the, the, I, I, I did want to say one thing, which is. Oh. The, <laughs> get him, June. Get him. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah, wait. Yeah. Wait a second. Oh, okay. Just, you'll find another <laughs> moment to jump in. It's not now. Um, I did want to say one thing about their collision because it seemed to me that that collision which took place, Corey, uh, no, Laney's on the bicycle and yes. Corey Feldman is running. It seemed to me that they had about 15 to 20 feet to avoid that collision. Where they, they must have seen each other. They, they had they to. They must have seen they, each other. No they were the only people corner, running in a direct path in someone's not backyard. It was a blind <laughs> turn. It was straight i'm running towards you i'm on a bicycle what's so interesting to you and now we collide shouldn't like you know the movie logic should have included someone dying or whatever but what in fact happens is the old people disappear they just Very evaporate troubling. into and the it's dream r- space well first of all james is i don't want to please shut like- up james <laughs> I don't know what's going on, man. For a while, I couldn't get a word in, and then I started being more assertive, and I got the hand. And I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what to do. 
In now. Back home where <laughs> it's not like this. Yeah, you're up. not home anymore, James. <laughs> <laughs> The first, it wasn't the first time for the listener that I got the hand. I got it earlier on, and I thought, that's not for me. And it was. It was. It was. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, this is Trump's America, baby. <laughs> yeah. What I couldn't figure out is in the dream state... Um, when, okay, when, uh, when uh, Jason Robards and, and, uh, and Bobby, uh, right, Bobby, uh, Corey Feldman yes. are in the yard talking, um, uh, Lainey and Gina are in the house packing up, right? They, right but Lainey, we keep cutting to them in the house packing up, but what world are they in together? That's the prank they world. They in the dream show? That's the dream prank world. world. Oh, prank no. world? Prank no. world. <laughs> What's the prank world? Well, I think that Corey Feldman... <laughs> is doing the big prank of whoa, you're going to lose whoa. her, right? So he's creating that prank world of they're packing, they're leaving, but that's never uh, actually part of it. So he's manifest, like he's manifesting so you that think, inside world, okay. like Matrix style. Well, I like, agree because I don't think any of that is real, obviously. And that's why he doesn't have pants on with the tuxedo. He's already showing you, I'm a, I'm a prankster. I'm a I believe, prankster. I sincerely believe Corey Feldman for some reason was allowed to choose all of his own wardrobe. <laughs> He doesn't even go to wardrobe. He One just of came. my That's favorite I mean. things, though, about about teenagers in the '80s in movies, is that so many of them are dressed in like business casual. Like there's, <laughs> there are so many like eleventh graders who are in business suits, and it's just so delightful to see. Some of us wore suits to school. Listen, my sister for a, and I thought she was so cool. My my older sister wore in high school lace lace, uh, turtlenecks, and big brooches, and giant, giant blazers over it, and her <laughs> hair twisted back. I mean, she was dressed like an elderly woman, yeah. and I was like, awesome. <laughs> awesome. I used to bring a briefcase to school because I thought it was cool. <laughs> Incredible. Oh, Why yeah. not? I'm you just know, trying I'm, to imagine, though, from Lainey's point of view... From Lainey's point of view, Corey Feldman has told her, like, hey, remember those old people... Like, they're not there anymore. And, and they don't have a dog. Uh, no, and they're gone. And I, if I'm Lainey, I'm like, wow, you've definitely killed them. <laughs> and this is your confession, and I'm next. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. And she takes the news in stride, really. Well, that's all. <laughs> James? I... <laughs> Yeah, this is now your time. James, the show, James, the show is yours. Your the pressure now. <laughs> what do you want to say now? Look, I agree with everything June said. Good. Good. <laughs> no, I think you're right, especially because he's, he's saying to her, uh, you know, you're, you're, we're married already we're and all this stuff. And, and, and they're not there. And all that's going yeah. on. But I think because she's going from Joel to him. Yes. This scene, like all of us, we're basically looking for someone who's better than our ex. Yeah. Just Ooh. even slightly. Yes. The bar is so low with Yeah, Joel. Yeah. So she's like, oh, cool. He's not like an absolute yeah. psychopath who my parents want to induct into a cult. Yes. I also was obsessed with the dance team at this high school and what they were. I never got the sense that they were getting ready for an event. You know, I or loved some it. sort of co competitive. Maybe it's in the four hour cut, but I would have loved to see what they were rehearsing turn into a performance. Yeah, and like, is it a dance team? Um, are and then they Lainey's cheerleaders? solo, too. She's doing a solo to a modernized version of Dream That's a Little right. Dream That's right. that turns into the duet that is this still is from. This movie has a dance duet. This movie has a minimum of five top hats. Yes. Uh, there's two in this scene, there's two in the end, and I believe Corey Feldman is rocking another top hat early on in the movie as well. Like, Top I heard he rented them his hat collection. He made production <laughs> pay for his hats. No, but the dance team is doing something. Again, it's setting up something. We're going to see it. They're all there. They're doing their thing. No, we're not. We only see I mean, I guess. Yeah. And the I mean, group number they're rehearsing is pretty simple. Even the dance. Wow. Turned, turned. Yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, all right. Sorry, it June is watch. already no, internalized the whole day. I'm ready to do it. You've now. seen dance moms. <laughs> you want... Who's Joel's friend in the first the first time we see them dancing? 
And Joel's right. Joel's looking from the wing. At that point, we don't really know. It's our first introduction to Joel. Right, and that's so, and we already know that Joel's a psycho, and his friend's like, hey, man, why are we waiting for the two Corys? I'm bored. And he's like, wait, they'll be here. It's like, what were they going to go wait outside the gym? Like, well, it was a weird meeting point, and yeah. it didn't seem like they were going anywhere or doing anything. It's very confusing, but the friend... I, it was the only person in the film I related to. <laughs> well, he's, he's, he's like, the only... Why the fuck are we watching these? The what only... are we doing? He pops up every now and again, and he always seems like a pretty reasonable guy. Like, the nicest guy. Everyone is going crazy and losing their minds and not reacting in a way that you would ever react to something. And he's the only one there going, everyone else knows this is nuts, right? <laughs> I just want to like, play flag football. Yeah. He's there at the gun thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's, yeah. He's Even like, when the speech is going on, he's like, not the time, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much happening here. <laughs> Why are you giving a speech like you're an old man? <laughs> <laughs> we need to <laughs> nip this in the bud. I also love that, like, the idea that ending is, hey, if, if an old man could talk you out of shooting a person, it's like, shouldn't be that hard of a, uh, a like a ledge to jump off a big yeah yeah don't don't kill the high school bully for no apparent reason the bully doesn't do like a, a couple punches he Just, stole some food off his plate earlier in the film <laughs> right yeah. when he was on his way to see his buddies right yeah so and also joel is not wrapped so tight joel frequently in the film goes from talking to someone and going yeah you're my best friend to never say that to me again <laughs> Why is it regularly? You're regularly, right, you're right. Non-stop. He he's like, and that's why we're all friends. I will gut you in your fucking swipe. <laughs> so there's no point that I don't think Joel would have shot that guy. In fact, yeah. I think it's very unrealistic that he got <laughs> talked out of it. They're lucky that all of them walked away from that in that alley. <laughs> By the way, I thought this this movie was going in such a direction that I li- literally thought Joel is going to turn now and shoot Corey. Yes. yes. And yeah, for sure. I was rooting for, for him. Sure. Me too. And I would have been like, oh, what a tragic ending. And then Jason Robards would have like lived and been like, oh, life is precious. And I would have been like, yeah, that's a good movie. Like, and then, then he doesn't shoot Corey, but then he walks right up to that Dumas's face with the gun. Dumas. And, and then empties the bullet. <laughs> that scene, that Too scene when, they, when it all ends and Corey's like, I'm going to go over there and drink a beer. And, and finally, Joel lowers the gun or whatever. And they all go to the back and they're talking and they're drinking beers. Dumas stays on his knees in front of the headlights of the I car, like that. rocked. He crosses his, himself. He Quirks. is like, his life is changed. Yeah, yeah. I think what was hard, though, is like, again, with the high school hierarchy being so fluid, you know, I I didn't I I thought Joel was a popular rich kid. He seemed like the cock of the walk kind of. Absolutely. So the jacket says it all. But I don't but I I didn't understand why Dumas, why he was a target for Dumas. I don't either. Well, I think Dumas is just a straight up bully right i mean but yeah, joel but seems usually like he would be the, the guys bully. like joel are protected in in the order oh. that we all subscribe to like yeah. the prison like a prison system like yeah. he's like he's it handsome was really confusing I, again i don't know what the, i only really know your hierarchy from saved by the bell sure right sure no so that's like, it i know that there's like jocks and uh the cool yeah. kids and the geeks and stuff but yeah. like in england uh the really tough kid wouldn't be beating up the popular kid like, uh, like that's my read yeah. of joel yeah was he's like Zach Morris. Yes, And absolutely. now AC Slate is bullying him for some reason. And it's like, you guys are meant to be friends. You're meant to be both Duncan Screech. Yes. Well, I... <laughs> it made no sense to me that Joel... May, may he rest in yes. peace. It made and no... I, no I don't, I, I'm sorry to bring him up. I, I know I'm... Yeah, it made no hard. sense to me From that abroad. Joel's crew included the Corys. Like, because he and... Corey Feldman seemed to be competing over the same girl. So yeah. in, is there some way that the fact that they were best friends, they were too, almost Joel too close, and, then why is Dumas even here? And Joel know. and Lainey don't seem to have a great relationship on the oh, outset God, no. either. Like when we look at these characters across the board, we have Lainey, uh, her mother is, is tranking her, is uh, roofing her. We have Corey Haim, 
whose mom ran over him with a car. Revolver. We oh, have. I forgot that. Yeah. That's the reason he's. I, I've uh, only just put that together. Yeah. That's why he's got the limp and the cane that he walks around like Charlie Chaplin. It's spinning. It's doing a lot. Doesn't seem like it's supporting the leg. Um, even though he really did have a broken leg. And then, um, and then you have uh, Feldman, whose parents, you know, he's the, he's the, he's the son of a 13 year old bride. Uh, <laughs> I have a theory about yeah, that. Yeah. I think that uh, before this film, there was another body swap. And um, <laughs> the dad's age appropriate wife. Body swap with a child. All right, now I'm in. Now I'm. I'm... That makes and he sense. had to continue the relationship with the woman he loved, right? Knowing that her body was no longer what society would deem acceptable. By the way, at one point, if you're you know on your on yeah. your flight on your flight back, I encourage you to watch a David Duchovny film uh. that we did here on the show called The Secret, where uh, his wife and daughter. Don't even get... don't yeah, even don't explain it. it. Just watch it. Okay. Okay, I'll just watch it. <laughs> yeah, just watch it. You guys have been so generous to me with my viewing so far. <laughs> I'll take more recommendations from you. <laughs> what else should I watch for the 13 hour flight home, guys? By the way, justice for Shelley. Yes. Justice for Shelley. Yes. You know, she really got the short end of the stick. Who's and Shelly? She's... Wh- Who's oh. Shelly? How dare you? Who's Shelly? Who's Shelly? Yeah. You, you made us do this, asshole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is exactly the problem. Who's you don't Shelley? even recognize that Shelly is a true hero. That's Shelly the shirt. is... Who's Shelly? Cor- Who's Who's Shelly? Yeah. How dare you <laughs> question any of this? <laughs> I don't know. Shelly is Corey Feldman's g- girlfriend. Like, they are oh. established he, she does in a relationship. Homework. Oh, she does all of his homework. Are she is his girlfriend. They're together. They are a couple they are and a they couple. are together. Oh, they're in love. She's in yes. love with him, rather, which, which, which she is. She, and she does all his homework. She's very interesting. I was confused about Shelly because she pops in very intermittently as well. It's like, oh, I can't believe it. I don't even know what she's seen that she can't believe in. That she storms <laughs> off. We don't get enough time with Shelly to understand. I mean, well, Shelly Laney and the girl who's dressed like an Andrews sister. Yes. I couldn't make heads or tails of that. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, all right, I'm going with it. But like, they seem to be a crew. But again, this movie exists in a feast or famine kind of scenario. It's either everybody all at once cacophonously in a scene together, or it's just two people. And that's it. It's like, it yeah. really, it careens between t- way too many people and no people. I felt like I counted 12 <laughs> people in the first 15 minutes, and I was like, any one of these could be the main character, and I don't know where Let's to invest anyone. my emotions. And then I start yeah, to find that's out. That's why you was, had to let go of Shelly so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> you guys keep on saying, Shelly, isn't it Cherry? Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't you oh. feel stupid. My research says cherry. cherry. Get him, Tim. That's <laughs> embarrassing. How many people have you said that to? I said it to Shelly. During the week in cafes and restaurants. <laughs> Tim, am I right or wrong? Is it cherry or Shelly? Eat a bag okay. of shit. Thank you. <laughs> and put some more shit on top of it. And eat that shit as well. Let me let me go. I know we've talked Am about. Am I fitting in? Is that how we talk to each other? Here? Yeah, it was good. I mean, you're you're, you're on right. fire, James. <laughs> let's go. Let's go into the audience. Let's talk to them a little bit. Whoa. See what they have. Whoa. Um, I want to see where you're all at because I have a feeling you'll unpack some things that we didn't even get to. All right, hi. How are you? What's your name? Good. Jane. Jane. Okay. What's your question? Um, it's just I just wanted to point out that um, <laughs> Lainey's mom says something truly disturbing that nobody's mentioned. Which is when Lainey says, Joel hit me, the mom says, what did you do to provoke him? Or oh, yeah. why did you provoke him like that? It's very drop-dead Fred mom. Yeah. yeah. Who, I want to be clear, you support. Who you think is a good mother. Scathing Aww. indictment, Team Sanity. Well, I think that she is uh, protecting her daughter. Uh, okay. I think I have a different opinion about this woman. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean... She does, she's a, she, 
<laughs> he's not a good role model Look at for him a dog. Yeah, he's trying to get Look out at of him this. twisting. Uh, Paul, I don't think we're ready to move on to another question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think yeah. you, I mean, that was a very valid point that was raised. <laughs> well, yeah, what did she do to provoke him? <laughs> <laughs> Classic team sanity. <laughs> She may or may not have body swapped with an old woman and then not danced with him at the prom or whatever <laughs> what dance was. Here's a question. After the prom, when Lainey and Bobby go to that dance hall, was that a dream or was that real? That's yeah. like a Twin Peaks dance hall. It's, it's so for sure no. seems, yes, the dreamscapey, but, but who honestly who knows? knows? I could also no, no, see them No, no, because they're dancing with to- only old people. Yeah, yes, but I, could but, see he, them. but I could see him knowing exactly where yes, to go. Yes, yeah, Friday night at the VFW, there's a there's they play big band music, and you can dance with you know I could see that because everybody you know because if it were a dream sequence, then they would have had to have both been asleep. Mm-hmm. Well, I agree, one I of agree. them. I agree. No, no, because Lainey can be in the dream world because of the prankster. Lainey's already in. <laughs> Stop the- bringing up the prankster. <laughs> the prankster. <laughs> The prankster can manipulate the dream world. By the world. way, I Why completely does... miss the prankster storyline. Every time well, you bring it up. Just yeah, to... it is there, but it, I mean, it, it's only there in the one moment where he says, I, I made this that all up. A That's prank. All, it's all that. He never says prank. He Did just... you go back and watch it with that in mind? I mean, I recontextualized the entire film in that last moment of the film. <laughs> but isn't it what we don't and what we're uninterested in interrogating here so far is that Corey Feldman's character wants to stay in the dreamscape. Yeah. He wants to be dead. Yeah. He's not well, dead. Full stop. He's just in the dream world where things are better than his life because he doesn't like his parents, he doesn't like all of that. He doesn't like his pants. But Freddy Krueger really yeah. liked the dream world too. Bitch. <laughs> That's a Freddy Krueger quote. What's your name, sir? My name is Dan. Okay, what's your question? So just keeping on going in on her mom because she's the absolute worst. Not only did she ask her what she did to provoke her, but then in the next scene she says, I heard about that fight you got in. Like completely gaslighting her when Shelly had told her that, uh, what's his name, Joel hit her. So just well, like, in the even first worse. Scene, her mother is encouraging her to fuck Joel and she's like, I don't think I want to or I'm ready yet. And she's like, do it. <laughs> Now, Tim, Tim, I'm going to get to you, but you look like you were trying to get my attention. Like, do you feel like you have something to add to the mom discussion? All right, we'll get no. to you. No, Tim has written a bunch of slams on James. <laughs> yeah. okay. Ready and waiting, Tim. I'm jet lagged to fuck. They won't even touch me. All right, what's your name? What's your question? Uh, my name is Mike. So we had a bit of a different interpretation of the movie. Oh, I love it. Who's, <laughs> who's the we? we? Who's we? Okay, great. Two of them. I didn't know if it was like a whole row of people. All right, yeah. <laughs> they seem great, though. So we thought that when they had the collision, that the body switch fully happened for Corey Feldman, but sort of happened for the two women. Okay. And, that, and that's why she like couldn't remember her locker combination, and she was vibing with the old music, and that Jason Robards in Corey Feldman was trying to bring... Piper Laurie out we of Lane. This all we agree. is the same. Yeah. Yes, we agree yeah. with because you. You were saying. You were saying. So then. But it never we, happened. Well, I think what he. I think what he's saying is, I was right that there's a. It's no, a, no. I it's agree. A four body so switch movie. You want to say you. You want to agree with Paul? Dormant. It was a dormant. It was a dormant swap. Right. Yeah. It was, but it was quasi dormant. My is your name Mike? It is. Yeah. Tell me the scene where that is where Gina is revealed in Laney's body. Yeah, the lot, there's a lot. The lip, oh, the lip business. Bite, I guess so. And, the, and stuff I just like that. felt like I think the movie. Someone I, says, I think Harry Dean Stanton says, or someone says, maybe it didn't happen with her all the way because she wasn't as into it or something. Yeah. Yes. So I think that's meant to make us think what you're but, saying. And, and, and while you are agreeing with me and you are right, I will also say. <laughs> you said full body swap, Paul. Yeah. Well, hold on. But this is what I'll say. <laughs> the moment before the accident, she's like, shut up, you're wrecking it which made me believe she was more into it than him because she's fully into it, but yet the movie then says, I guess she wasn't into it enough. So so then then the other question is, so then why at the end are Lainey and Corey Feldman together? Agree. Because they really, they They never connected at all. She's never met Corey Feldman. Nope. 
She's only met Jason Robards in court. No, no, they, they, I mean, they're friends from before the movie, but. Well, right, because they're friends with, because. But her, she has been romanced by Jason Robards in Corey Feldman's Michael Jackson body. <laughs> so then, but Gina, <laughs> right? But Gina doesn't Eloquently really. Eloquently put. <laughs> but Gina kind of, Gina has the affectations of she's listening to modern music. She's dancing, shaking her butt around. At the end. At the end, but doesn't have any memory. Because she's like, oh, I didn't want to wake you. You were sleeping so well. So she doesn't even re- realize that she's been gone. But then... Oh. And she can't, like... like what? Uh, yeah, no, none of it really... Again, none of it makes sense. And I want to be clear. I do think Paul and Mike and Mike's crew, I do think the movie is trying is trying to seed those ideas that they, that it is in fact a but but why wouldn't you just do it why not have it be all four people swap and it's like we're young again uh oh but we can't be young again uh oh we have to die or or get out of here stop the, running the country die already yes well but here's the thing stop stop it Here's the thing, though. I think an even better version. I didn't need them to full, full swap right away. I was okay with a dormant swap. But what I thought was going to happen... <laughs> a, D- a DS? A DS. I was fine with an early DS. But what I thought was going to happen is that is that something was going to unlock Gina in Lainey. And that was going to be what Jason Robards understood that he didn't understand about his wife in those, you know, 40 odd years that they were together. That also didn't happen. Neither Mm -hmm. couple learned anything new about anybody. And I would hope- Nobody had anything. I would hope that the one thing that that Jason Robards would learn when he gets back is to get a bigger bed. Because it was Holy shit. They were sharing a twin bed. But Paul, back in those days in the 80s, I think one of the greatest advancements we've made as a people has been bigger beds. Bigger beds. Bigger beds. I don't think they needed it. I don't think they needed it. Robards and his wife, I don't think, spent a lot of time side by side, if you know what I mean. Yes. So I have heard from, I actually, Paul and I know a couple that won't, won't upgrade into a bigger bed because they believe there's something very intimate and and they credit a smaller bed to a long-lasting relationship. How so small? So I do think there is something... How anyone small? here in a smaller it's bed relationship? It's just a full size. Somebody, all right, you're in a smaller bed relationship? For me, right, there it is. For me, wow. at this point, I think it's Let's just... Let's talk to him about it. I think it's just... Please, yeah. please. Oh. How big Any is that bed? Any questions about the smaller bed relationship? So and from and now it's on, by choice? No, Yes, it is by choice. <laughs> <laughs> I have a full-size bed, and it is quite ample for us. We are not large people, so it is the perfect size for both of us. <laughs> wow. Full-size bed. Wow. I have Real Joel vibes bed. from this guy. <laughs> he has a full-size. You have a king size. All right, so there are... There she, are... she started to talk for two seconds. Couldn't even do the hand. <laughs> Fucking right in there. It is ample size for us. We are not big people. <laughs> It's absolutely fine. I thought you were my friend! <laughs> Gun to Paul's head, Paul's on his knees. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Thank you, God. Oh, God. Don't shoot Paul. Well, uh, now, I will say that you... So you're a two-bed relationship because you have a big bed, you have a small bed, and you can go back and forth. Oh, that's totally different, and that's the dream. Oh, well, let me ask you... You live in the dream. I have a question. So, so you don't live together? Not, Not yet. yet. So when you do, which bed will you choose? Great question, Jason. Obviously the king size. The king size? The size. And you, sir? We'll see. We'll see. Wait, if no, it, whatever fits, we'll see. Whatever fits in the bedroom. We'll see. It's a king size bed, motherfucker. You know it is. You know I it is. I love it. Let's get rid of the king. Let's, wow. keep, si- let's keep sleeping in that full size bed. Get out of town. Absolutely not. A testament to how good they're in adults. I've asked Paul if we can get an Alaska, which is... What's that? An Alaska is especially makes the biggest bed you can get. Yeah. It's and the you size can, of this state. And you can see Russia from it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I have it on a favorite tab on my computer, and I look <laughs> at it, and I think about it, I think what life would be like with it. <laughs> Uh, I'm all for an Alaska bed. I don't mind an Alaska bed. The problem is the quality of the mattress. Well, that's it. You can fit all the podcast equipment between the two of you. (laughs) 
never have to leave your bed. Jason just has to visit every now and again. <laughs> Plenty Sit of room. at the end like a dog. <laughs> the but, three of you talk about whatever movie you've just watched. Plenty of room for him. He doesn't even feel awkward there because it's such a big bed. It's yeah, a, it's all the size of the room. Um, okay. Plus, you can see the northern lights. <laughs> what, what's your, what's your uh, question? You've, we, I'll lean into you here. Um, my question is, in Corey Feldman's bedroom, there is a The Lost Boys movie poster. And what are the implications of that for this universe? So, I, I had a theory about this, which was... Prank world? I'm glad you brought this up. Yeah. My theory is that Corey Feldman has a poster of the Lost Boys in his room because he's a fan of the Lost Boys, so much so that he's modeled his own dressing after one of the stars of the Lost Boys. So he is dressing like Corey Feldman, but is not I would, Corey I would, Feldman. I believe you, Paul, and I think that I think what bears it what, what, what bears it out is that I believe that Corey Feldman would play a character that is a fan of Corey Feldman. Got a good body. <laughs> Definitely an improvised line. Uh, all right, Tim, what do you got over here? Tim, I feel like you got something. You really, you, I, the energy off you tonight. I Give it feel up like for Tim, got, everybody. Give it up for thing. Tim. All right, Tim. I watched the sequel today. Oh, right. The sequel, Dream a Little Dream I am just two. now finding out that this exists. <laughs> Should we play the trailer and then hear your question? Yes. Okay, hold on. Tim's hardcore. I... Yeah. <laughs> Tim doesn't fuck around. Regret going in so hard. <laughs> All right, so this is the sequel to Dream. I haven't even watched this. I figured I would uh, surprise myself with it. Oh, wait, that's the first one. Yep. So, oh, sorry, the projector moved down. We'll fix that in one second. Hold on. Oh, well, um, Tim just told me to sort the projector. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'll fix it. Jim? He said James Projector. James fucking Projector. I just, I just said that I regret it for the first time. That's good. We got James it. Projector? Wow. Are you fucking out of your mind? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sorting the projector. I'm, I'm the guest. None of this is my responsibility. <laughs> James Projector. None of this is on me. I could shit my pants and walk off and I've done a great job. <laughs> Just so you know, projector. just so you know, when this when this episode gets released, you will be credited as James Projector. <laughs> James, James Projector. projector. <laughs> Holy Christ. <laughs> Tim, oh Tim's God. getting too big for his britches. Tim. Okay. Tim. Oh, he, right. God, to not even make a full sentence out of it. Yeah. You put me in a bad mood for the trailer now, Tim. <laughs> I might be unnecessarily our guest, harsh. Tim. Respect our guest. Oh, uh, Tim is in a full body sweat. That was funny. <laughs> I do you know, just want to project it back in your goddamn eyes <laughs> and you can watch the trailer that way, Tim. How's that fun? Everyone can stand behind you and watch it projected on the back of your fucking head. <laughs> James Projector, you fucking high. <laughs> in the whole right. week in this goddamn city. Everyone talking to me like a piece of shit. And I need it from you as well. <laughs> Pitching ideas to fucking cokeheads. <laughs> now I'm here. Uh, I do just want to point out that this movie, uh, Dream a Little Dream 2, was released in... James Projector. <laughs> That's the T-shirt. You got it. That's the T-shirt. Has to be. That's amazing. <laughs> Dream a little dream two was oh. released in 1995. Starred two. the two. Wait, Corys. what was one? What year was one? Uh, 1989. Okay, thank you. And it starred the two Corys and Robin Lively from Teen Witch. Here we go. Oh, top that. <laughs> Corey Feldman. Oh, James. Whoa. James Projector and Corey Haim. Yeah, there's limits. So, who really hit it off with the hit Dream a Little Dream are hilariously reunited oh. and discuss. <laughs> that's on me. That's me. That's my bad. That's on me. That's on me. That's on me. That's on me. <laughs> uh, uh, 
Leave all this in. Oh, my God. All right, here we go. Corey Feldman. Whoa! 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 Joel? And Corey Haim. You're not going to believe this. Sorry. Who really hit it off in the hit Dream a Little Dream are hilariously reunited and discover Robin Lively. I'm not into this kind of a thing. In Dream a Little Dream 2. Oh, come on. Wow. Uh, I guess they just took the Michael Jackson and the, the gunplay and they carried that into the sequel, but... There's so much Michael Jackson stuff. Like, yeah. I'm, like, stymied by that. You guys are watching that, right? <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. We got to follow Inevitably, we'll end up doing it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, so what do you got? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Tim, you did it again. Obviously, we had opinions about this movie, but there are people out there with a different opinion. It is now time for Second Opinions. Hello, I'm Jason. Review said it was bad, a total train wreck. I couldn't help thinking that it wasn't bad at all. Review said it sucked as a complete disaster. I couldn't help thinking it wasn't bad at all. Second opinions. They had these thoughts inside of their heads and they typed them with their keys. <laughs> Amazing. Give it up for Jason. All right. For whatever reason, it's just June and I on stage. I love it. I love it. There are 1,673 reviews for this film, which is a lot, uh, especially uh, doing this show a lot. That's a huge amount. 83% of the reviews of this film are five-star reviews. <laughs> Only 1% are one-star reviews. Um, I'll start off here from 2024 in March. All right, so this is just a little while ago. Jessica writes, best part, is how elderly and teens come together in harmony. Always so much to learn from the elderly. Five stars. I will say, and maybe it is just because I'm elderly, it was, I loved a lot. I, I did think, like, I, again, I know I brought up about time earlier, and if you haven't seen it, I cannot recommend it enough. It is an astonishingly beautiful and heartbreaking movie. But there were moments between the young and old that I was like, oh, I wish this, this movie yeah. was more, uh, dug in more on that. There, there was such great stuff there. Anyway, sorry. Well, Karen Brobst in 2014 wrote, <laughs> you must see this movie and appreciate Corey Feldman. The review goes like this. This was one of the best movies I've ever seen. I am 65 years old, and I have gone to a movie every week of my whole life. Five stars. Of our whole life, every week. I'm going to end with this one because it will tie into uh, what's going to happen next year. Uh, e. Cooley uh, titles this review, Great Movie for All Generations. It's so romantic. It has a lot of human emotion in it. I have to admit, I used to be in love with Meredith Salinger, who played Laney in the film. Corey Feldman might not be the best actor ever, but... He was excellent in this, and the Academy Awards should have noticed. <laughs> the rest of the crew, well, they made an excellent movie. And the director and editor, they did a first-rate job. What else did this director do? Five stars. <laughs> now, sometimes on the show we say, oh, we'll do a third opinion. But you know what? The best opinion might come from someone uh, who was there. And tonight we have a very special guest. Uh, you know her from the film as Lainey, but please welcome <laughs> Meredith Salinger. Oh, see, you sit right there. Welcome. Well, welcome, Meredith. Well, this was a treat because we know each other, and when we picked this movie, I didn't realize that you were in it until I looked at the poster of it. 
<laughs> and I want to know everything. I mean, we all do, I imagine. I mean, yeah, like well, thoughts, reflections, anything. I don't understand this. You guys have said things tonight that I'm like, I never got this movie when we did it. <laughs> I, I don't understand it. It never made sense. I asked a thousand questions and then I was just Never like, got the answers, huh? No, no. Was I right that you were dormant? Were you dormant? Was, was it dormant? Was there a dormant Gina inside of you? Were you told to play dormant I feel dormant like Gina? it was dormant. Okay. because I, I believe that it was because at first she's sort of like doing things that she doesn't normally do. You guys got the lip pull thing. And then um, he's like, when you go to bed tonight, like maybe you'll find her in there. Right. And so then I think you get that little bits of them together. Yeah. But like, you're right. It's never been fully. Now, I have an important question. That's here. In terms of your choices, were you working with the reality that your mom was tranquilizing you every night? <laughs> <laughs> In retrospect, listening to all the terrible things. Like, I didn't really feel it back then. Because like, the 80s. it was a different It was time. the we 80s. <laughs> Like all that stuff about like he hit me and all that stuff. And I'm pretty like I'm a super feminist. Like yeah. that stuff really didn't really sure. set in my brain. But I think the whole filming of that movie was so weird. Yeah. And Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> Meredith, this movie was weird to film? <laughs> but everybody in that movie was like musical. Like Mickey Thomas played the teacher. Mickey Thomas yeah. from uh, Jefferson yeah. Starship or something. Oh like yeah? That. Right. Okay. And then the guy who was like Tim, the, the right? boyfriend of the mom, he's Ron? like John Ron is is something something in Foley. What Dan Engel Tim, what's that get band? On this. Tim Tim Faster. Tim, Google are, Tim Faster. <laughs> like that guy's a famous musician. Can people Oh wow. Know? Well, I, I Wait, guess was I, the director or the writer somehow a The music? director is the son of Alex Rocco. Oh. What? This movie is directed by Kid Rocco? <laughs> yes. Who knew? Yes. It, I mean, were you present for the Michael Jacks? I mean, you were for parts of it, but were Was were I you? present for yeah. the Michael Jackson? I mean, because it's like, that's one of those that things. That dance scene yeah. is haunting me to this day. Like, Can you was, go a little bit into what, how did explain. this happen? Yeah. Well, there was a choreographer. Okay. But then... God. That was. No. But then there was a, maybe another choreographer. But then there, th but then there was a choreographer. The, a choreographer. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> Tim, Tim, Tim. <laughs> game recognized game. Tim, absolutely elevating Meredith and cr cr just crushing James. Hey. <laughs> Look, I can't fault the guy. He picks his moments well. I mean, they, they did keep explaining that situation like, oh, how would the old man know how to dance? And you said, right. oh, he watched that Michael Jackson video over and over. And so it was sort of like you could, you could um, justify. Right. Anything happened in the scene that we didn't see. Right. It's like, what, it, what, oh, well, he could have done a million things. We just aren't privy to them. Right. Right. So, like, yeah. like, yeah, like costume choices got chosen because mm -hmm. like, you know, you might have a personal preference as an actor. Yeah, because he doesn't really... Might, yeah. I, and this is the thing. What I would say is, like, that makes the movie hard because he never seems to be embodying an old man. Right, but he trips sometimes. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes it's not, like, perfect. Right, okay. Well, you, you Lainey, to me, has a very classic trajectory <laughs> of, like, a young woman in these movies, which is... She spends most of the movie trying not to get raped at every turn, just like trying to fend off rapists. True. And then the guy who doesn't want to rape her right away, <laughs> she falls in love with and is then like has that classic line. And this happens after the Michael Jackson uh, dance, which is, you're so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> And I was so happy that to see you play out that narrative because it is, it's just an very epic. iconic. <laughs> yes, it's an epic performance. There is, yeah. But there is, yeah. there is an element of it which is insane, which is that your character is 
for all intents and purposes, falling in love with Jason Robards. Right. Not Corey Feldman, not Bobby. Right. Like, which is, I wanted that last scene to you to be like walking away with Corey Jason. Feldman, but looking back at Jason Robards, like, hmm. Or, yeah, yeah or not with Corey Feldman at all, just like ding dong, Jason <laughs> right. Robards house. Yeah, that would have been good. Meredith, when you were working on the dance sequence, did you, was there any information from the director of like, this is dance club and you compete every Friday? <laughs> this is. Oh, like, why? What, were, what was what that we group? Doing? Yeah. I think it was just like dance class at dance school, class. maybe. Okay. I, yeah. But you said something earlier about um, like how it doesn't make sense and why is Corey Haim even in it? And I, my favorite part of the entire movie is that scene with Corey Haim in the car where it's going on and he's like, hello, honey. Like he's just so funny and cute and adorable. And, and that was the best part of the movie for me, just that little um, him being funny in that well, moment. Uh, here's a thought that I, I was that th- <laughs> Knowing that you were going to come out here, I was thinking about this. I looked about... It's shot in North Carolina, right? You shot yeah, North- on Wilmington. All right, Beach, so you're uh-huh. shooting in, uh, and I believe the high school is the same high school from the pilot of Dawson's Creek. I did some deep diving. Oh yeah, I did um, Dawson's Creek there too. Okay. Oh yeah, wow. Look at oh, it's you. Yeah. Oh, you went back there and filmed Dawson's I Creek. I did. I went back to film Dawson's Creek. Was that yeah. wild? Being back at Dream a Little Dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, Van der Beek. I filmed Dream a Little Van Dream. Van der Beek. <laughs> I don't know what it was about. <laughs> and I was there. I asked a lot of questions. I know what this is about. <laughs> it's your creek. <laughs> when you're, but you're there in North Carolina, and I always feel like when you're when you're in a in a place away from home, there is like this kind of you have family that forms there. But you also are with these two guys who are arguably at the, the, the height of their career at this point. Is there hangout there or are they are like Great are question. they are they are they like just a they are they just kind of untouchable in this no, moment? No, no, no. It we actually had the most fun filming. Okay. We you know, Shelly and yeah. I were besties. Shelly. And we'd Shelley. hang out with um Harry Dean and Smoke Pod and wow. it was super that, that's fun. That's what we want to like, hear. Can, can you imagine that's hanging really out fun. with Harry Dean Stanton and Piper Laurie yeah. and being like, yeah. what's it like to I be mean, Harry's mom? Yeah, and Harry Dean Stanton's performance in, in Pretty in Pink is one of the most important performances. Yes, ever he's so to me. amazing. And we'd stay we all stayed at the same hotel. And there was a bar at the bottom of the hotel. And every now and then, like, we'd go down there and order strawberry daiquiris. But then um, for my, well, the day I turned 18, we were shooting and a cop came on set. And I thought, oh, my God, we're in trouble because yeah. we ordered daiquiris. strawberry daiquiris <laughs> with whipped cream downstairs. Oh. And I was really scared. And I'm a really good girl. And um, <laughs> And so the cop and the stop filming and everybody's like what, looking at me and I'm so scared and and the cop comes up to me and then somebody presses <laughs> and he's like a total stripper oh they oh hired for me my God. <laughs> on my 18th birthday. Dean Stanton blazing another J watching the <laughs> <laughs> It was a different time. <laughs> You're welcome. People did like this movie back then, it though. I know oh, yeah. everyone's like, yeah, it's, say, it's what, the what worst the... movie ever. Everyone's, no. but, but back then, yeah. and some people were like, that's my favorite movie. And one of my Absolutely. best friends was a total fan. When I first met her, she's like, that's my favorite. I'm like, really? Meredith, thank you for being here. Oh, thank uh, you, guys. Thank this you so is much, awesome. Meredith. This is awesome. Just thank you. fantastic work. What and a by the delight. Way, really? You're so great in the movie. Oh, yeah. I, you're such a great sport for being here and trying to answer questions from a film that was shot in 1988. So I appreciate you uh, going down. Anything... And made no sense then. No, made no sense then either, yeah. But you, uh, but uh, like I said, like these are the movies that I remember this movie. It was, it, it was a big deal movie. It's so awesome to have you here. Anything that uh, you want us to know? Anything else about you? Anything that we can, yeah, anything at all? Well, um, I have been coming to the Largo for like 20 million years. Yeah. My best friend always sings here, my Nika Costa, and my husband is Patton Oswalt, and I'm always backstage watching from the side, and it's super fun to be up on stage, and I'm happy you asked me. Yeah. We're so happy that you're here. What a treat. Give it up for Meredith. Yes! Woo! 
<laughs> All right. That was awesome. That All right. Was so, well, such a treat. We've done it. We've done it. We've told Tim to fuck himself. <laughs> told James to work on the projector. Um, we know what our T-shirt is. Uh, now, James, I want you to talk. You have a, an HBO special coming out. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm imagining that this will be out at the same time, so we can just say it like that. So your HBO special is out right now. Tell us a little bit about that so we know where to find it. It's called uh, uh, Heckler's Allowed. I'm sorry, is that right? Heckler's Welcome. Welcome, sorry. Sorry, I know no, you've got a lot on your plate. You've had to watch a different film every day your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched it, and I'm 65 years young. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's called he- Heckler's Welcome. It's shot uh, where, where I grew up, and uh, it's a gig where I allow the audience to do whatever they like. There are no rules, so it's like an audience full of Tims. And, <laughs> um, I perform it in the round as well. They okay. are surrounding me. They can do whatever. Uh, I'm dealing with them while also trying to tell the story of why I'm doing this show and uh, about my own shortcomings. It's CS yeah, so it's out on HBO. Uh, and now, I imagine every night is different. So wh- how many shows did you tape? Or do, is it a, co- is a, a, like a, a compilation of multiple shows? Or is it one great show, effectively? It's the one show in Northampton uh, where, where I used to go and watch shows when I was, before I was even a comedian. Um, and uh, I was so panicked about if we'd get a good one or not yeah. that I also filmed it uh, in Dublin and in a place called Truro in the UK. And uh, have no use for those now. But um, filmed those anyway. And we also did an audio recording in my actual home, home hometown of Kettering. And that's out on vinyl. And it's a completely different show to the HBO one because they heckle me for 95% of that. And it's such a small town that the hecklers turn out to know each other. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Um, any, and we can find, you can find I will out- also recommend James's other two specials, one of which is called Repertoire. It is on Netflix. And the other is called... Cold Pizza 1997, I Hate Myself. I love watching people trying to remember that title. It's something like that. Cold Lasagna, Hate Myself 1999, and that Thank is available you. exclusively on my website. And it is incredible. Both of these specials are absolutely fantastic. Uh, Huge go, fan. Yes. Also your season of Taskmaster. Yeah. Great season of Taskmaster. Uh, and your books are fantastic. I don't uh, how to them. Quit Social Media, uh, Classic Scrapes. Um, I didn't even look at anything. I know it in my head. Paul and I have both done your podcast, which is fantastic, and thank you for doing ours. And Jean will be on it, and yeah, you can do the I hand as much as you like. Invite. Okay, great. <laughs> we'll we'll be so glad to have you on it great. if you would like to come on and we'll talk see. about food. Well, <laughs> I've never made an enemy on a podcast before. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> this feels you got bad. two. You got two. <laughs> well, I don't give a shit about Tim. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you so much. <laughs> We will see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. All right. Thank you, James A. Caster, And thank you, Meredith Salinger, for coming down to tell us a little bit more about Dream a Little Dream. I mean, that was truly a dream come true. A big shout out to the amazing staff at Largo and everybody up in the booth this past week. We've had a great team there. And we will be back in January for a three-night run. So get those tickets right now. But if you can't make it out to LA, we have our holiday show coming up. That's right. Our holiday show on December 12th with Jessica St. Clair. Now you might want to immortalize dream a little dream, but we are going to immortalize a moment from this show. That's a little bit different. You see, we figured there's no better t-shirt than a t-shirt that says James Projector. That's right. We have the James Projector shirt right now in our T Public store. Go to tpublic.com slash stores slash HDTGM. It will be on sale right now. I mean, on sale and on sale, like discounted. Anyway, people, if you got opinions, if you have a take, I mean, I don't know what we could have missed from Dream a Little Dream, but if you have something to tell us, give us a call at 619-P-A-U-L-A-S-K or jump on our Discord at discord.gg slash HDTGM and we will break it down together. We will answer your questions. And you know what? Jason and I have to talk about a lot of stuff. And uh, one of the things we're going to talk about is the Back to the Future musical that Jason had no idea about and that I am 
truly obsessed with. So <laughs> uh, that is a fun little bit that you get to look forward to in next week's Last Looks. Um, by the way, people, if you want something special from me from the holidays, uh, I'm going to give it to you. That's right, because at the Pod Swag store, I have personalized, or I should say I have signed a bunch of my books with different sayings from How Did This Get Made. Now, if you want something even more personal, head to my website, and I'll personalize it to you with what you want me to say. That's right, people. Uh, you got two options. You can get a Geostorm, you can get a Face Waterfalls, or you can get Dear Beth, Will You Marry Me? Paul Shear. I mean, I've done it all. We also have a bunch of great Christmas gifts at podswag.com. How did this get made? Podswag gifts. It's so good. I love our Team Fred and Team Sanity pint glasses. All right, people, remember, if you listen to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please make sure you are subscribed to our feed and have automatic downloads turned on in the show settings. It helps us, and we really appreciate that a lot. And last but not least, I have to thank our entire team, who this show could not be done without. I am talking about our producers, Scott, Sonny, and Molly Reynolds, our movie-picking producer, Avril Halley, and our engineer, Casey Holford, and our associate producer, Jess Cisneros. That's all I got, people. We'll see you next week on Last Looks. Bye for now.